Hi, this is Linda. You're back in the Groove Again Coach with another quick video. You know, I've been talking about visualization lately and I've been talking about visioning. Visioning your dream life, for example. But if you're not ready to take action, then you might be visioning and not getting anywhere. So I want to talk to you about a model. It's called the Stages of Changes. And this model is primarily used in the addictions field, but applies to many other things that we want to make changes towards. And I'll give you some example. For example, if I want to go to the gym, that's a change. I want to start going to the gym. So I think about it and I think about it and I never go to the gym. That could be because I'm not really ready to go to the gym. So it helps to evaluate, what I'm going to talk about helps to evaluate how ready are you. Uh, I'll give you another example. I want to start traveling on my own. That's a great goal. I want to start traveling on my own. But maybe I want to start going to restaurants on my own too, but I hesitate and I never do go. So there's a couple of things that come up with that. Maybe I'm not really ready to go out on my own. Maybe I don't know how to handle that being out on my own. So there's a few things here that could also um, uh, predict success, right? So let me talk about the model of change, the stages of changes, I should say. So it starts with pre-contemplation. So maybe I'm not even thinking about going to the gym. So why would I change? I'm not even thinking about it. It's not even in my mind. Uh, and, and my friends might say, come on out with us. Uh, or you can go by yourself, we'll meet you there. But maybe I don't even want to do that. So pre-contemplative is when I haven't even thought about it at all. It's not even in my radar. I'm not interested in making any change within the next few months. And then after that, it's the contemplative stage. And during the contemplative stage is when you start thinking about it, all right, and maybe you're even exploring the pros and cons about it, but you haven't yet made that change. You haven't done really anything to get you towards that change. So that's pre-contemplative. Then after that, you can go from pre-contemplative to preparation. Preparation is when you're preparing yourself to make that change. So if I was thinking of going to the gym and now I've been thinking about it and I've decided, okay, I'm going to go to the gym, I might start preparing to go to the gym, start preparing myself by getting myself a new pair of running shoes, which will motivate me even more, maybe even getting myself a new pair of shorts that will motivate me even more. Or even if I just want to start going outside, walking outside like what I'm doing right now, um, I would just need a good pair of running shoes. And so I bought the running shoes and I'm preparing myself to start being more active. Maybe going to the gym is part of that as well. That's preparation, where I'm starting to make little, um, little adjustments to my life to get myself in action. Action is the next stage, right? So action is when I'm actually going for the walk. I'm actually uh, planning my trip or I'm planning to go to the movies by myself and I'm doing it. I'm planning it. So next week I'm going to go to the movies by myself. I'm in action. So that's different than pre-contemplative where I'm not even thinking about going to, going to the movies by myself as an example or wanting to travel by myself. Pre-contemplative is no, I'm, like, I'm not ready for that. I'm not even thinking about that, right? So we talk about pre-contemplative, contemplative. We've talked about preparation and we've talked about action. So once you're in action, that means that you are going to the gym, you might have stopped smoking if that's what your goal was. You might have started going to places on your own if that's what you wanted to change. You are in action, but then what can happen is once you're in action doesn't mean you can't go back down and 
in the addiction field, they call it relapsing. Now, we're not going to necessarily call it relapsing if you all of a sudden stop going to the gym. Uh, some people might use that word, but you know, after a while, maybe you just don't feel like going to the gym. So you're going back to your old habits. So you also want to have a maintenance plan. A maintenance plan is to make sure that whatever change that you've decided to take action towards continues for a long time. And that's where maybe getting support from a coach, getting support from a trainer, getting support from a friend to help you maintain those habits. Now, coaches are great. I'm a coach. I'm going to tell you a little bit about how, how I work. Uh, I, I find it's really helpful to work with a coach or to work with me because I will keep you accountable. We will schedule meetings, you know, three times a month. And of course, it isn't to say, well, how come you didn't go to the gym? <laughs> or, or how come you didn't go to the restaurant? No, it's to really explore that. Because, you know, at some point, some things that you've wanted to do, that you were in action with, maybe they're not that important anymore. And maybe you don't want to be doing that anymore. But then, if you're left on your own devices, you think, oh my God, I should have really kept, you know, kept, kept it up and you start feeling guilty and all sorts of things can happen. But when you work with a coach, a coach is there to support you. It's, the coach is there to cheerlead you on. I'm there to help you get your groove back. That's why I'm called the Back in the Groove Again Coach. I want you to get your groove back. And if getting your groove back means stopping going to restaurants by yourself, for example, and going with other people, then we're gonna work on that. Whatever it is that you want, right? That's, that's the whole idea behind coaching. And people sometimes would need to have a coach because otherwise they might end up with forgetting things altogether, not even working on their goals, or having this crazy thought and not knowing what to do with it. So working with me, working with a coach is really, really helpful for many, many different reasons. So that was the stages of changes model. I think it's a really useful model to ask yourself, where am I at? You know, when I'm thinking about this change and be honest, <laughs> be honest with yourself. You know, am I really willing to make a change within the next few months? And it might be, hell no, I, no. Or maybe it's heck yeah, hell yeah, I am really doing this. And then you can notice that the motivation is there, your energy is shifting, um, right? To make you go into the action phase. But if you're thinking, I don't really, really wanna start doing that, then that's okay, right? That's okay. Uh, maybe your friends are encouraging you to do things that you don't really, really wanna do. And it might just be, listen guys, I'm not really into doing this right now, so <laughs> thanks anyways, but not for me right now. It might just be asserting yourself, right? So they, we're talking about developing skills here uh, to uh, identify what it is you want, what it is you don't want, and how to address those things when you don't want those things. Setting boundaries, for example. These are all different uh, skills that you may need to develop and again, that's what coaching is there to help you with. Alright, so there you go. I hope that that model was helpful to you to help you decide where you're at with the changes that you want to make. This is your Back in the Groove Again coach and for more information on my services, do go to my website at backinthegrooveagain.com. Bye now.